Hello everyone, happy Tuesday, and welcome to another episode of Quandaries and Sundries. I hope you're doing well, and had a great weekend and an amazing Valentine's Day, and just an overall great day so far. And if you didn't have a Valentine's Day this year, I hope you took some time for some self-love. I know I did, and I really enjoyed it. And now I'm back here to tell you the science and history news. So without further ado, let's just hop right into this. Let's start off talking about chemical exposure in the most unexpected of places. In this modern age, because of our rapidly advancing society, chemical exposure is a serious problem. Because let's say you introduce a new revolutionary product or chemical. It gets approved to use because it's not toxic, but that doesn't mean it's toxic or not. Because over time, it can become toxic. But by the time we have figured that out, it will have been used in thousands of products over time. For example, we didn't ban lead paint in toys or in the paint we use for our walls to the 70s. And we were using it to paint our houses for the greater part of the 19th century as well as the 20th century. And in some buildings, it actually still exists. And lead in paint can cause behavioral, developmental, and all types of problems. I'm very careful about what I put in my body now or what I expose myself to. Because I'm currently almost about 30, and I'm ready to find out when I'm 80 that everything I've come in contact with is harmful to me in some ways. Nevertheless, I got off track. Today we are talking about nail salons. Because to a, according to a recent study out of Toronto, nail salon technicians are at a higher risk for chemical exposure and poisoning compared to someone working in a factory burning plastics. By a high risk, and by high risk, I mean 30% higher compared to those in plastic factories. When you go to a nail salon or you do it yourself, there is a chemical compound called dipethyl pythalate which basically makes the polish more flexible, less prone to chipping, and allows you to keep the color for longer. But over the last few years, companies have been eliminating them because in extremely high doses, it can affect your health. But don't worry, you would have to inhale the stuff for years. And by inhale, I mean drink or snort it or something like that. But it's still being used at nail salons. Specifically, the more dangerous version has been found in lower levels called phytholate plasticizer, which is banned in cosmetics in Canada, and depending on the state, have strict regulations in the United States under environmental protection laws and health laws. But because of how cheap they are compared to the safer, safer, more expensive alternatives, you can still find them in cheaper nail salons, especially in the not high-end ones. And don't worry, they won't hurt you. But what I'm actually worried about are the workers. That is a whole nother story. Even if you're being exposed to a tiny amount that won't matter when you're getting your nails done, imagine what it's like for the nail technician every day over the span of years. And the worst offender is that in some nail salons, small amounts of flame retardants have been found, which can cause severe mental impairments and birth defects. But why do nail salons use these? Well, it's really sad because it's cheaper. And that's all there is to it. Also, if you don't know that the nail salon you're visiting, the technicians and the workers might be trafficked. I keep an eye out for if the employees speak English or not, and if they want to actually have a conversation with you, if they're allowed to take money from you. And I'd look for over for the turnover rate. It's just something to keep in mind. Because it's something more common than you think. Most of the time, how this happens is that people, especially women, are smuggled illegally into the United States from somewhere like Taiwan and are made to work at sweatshops or massage parlors and nail salons and have a debt to pay off. So if you were to hand them money and they took it, they might become punished or worse, they just might disappear. So many women from Asian countries are turned into slaves or indentured servants in the United States. This is a serious topic that I think more people need to realize. We need to start caring about nail technicians and the workers because they are being poisoned and possibly trafficked. Let's care for one another, everyone. I don't know how to end this story because at the end of researching, I found the trafficking thing out and it kind of made me sick and it pissed me off. 
If you want me to expand on it more in the future, I definitely will, but... I'm just thinking about the whole fact that this happens all the time underground in the United States. You learn new things every day. It's really what they tell you, and it actually is true. If you have made it this far into the show, I'd really appreciate if whatever platform you're listening to this on, whether YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or whatever audio platform my voice is transmitting to you through, please subscribe or follow me. And please, I love the feedback, so don't feel shy to tell me whatever you think, whether it be through the YouTube comments or on my social media. Now let's get right back into the rest of it. Finally, as global warming and our climate shifts, the talk of extinction and the risk of losing species always crosses the forefront of our mind from time to time. But there is another type of extinction that I think needs to be talked about more, that is happening more and more frequently. Societal extinction. Meaning, a species may have been extinct for decades, but the impact it has on our planet and our culture can drastically affect us for decades. Or how we perceive, embellish, or demonize, or just forget a species can have drastic effects on the animal kingdom, conservation, and biodiversity. There are a few parts to this, so let me break them down. One example is the fact that as modern medicine has bec begun to become more popular and the norm, the need for traditional and natural medicines like herbs and plants are less needed, leading to them being forgotten in the common consciousness. And eventually they will go extinct without us realizing, because urbanization will destroy their habitat and conservation won't matter because we forgot about them. Extinction has a lot to do with how we as a society perceive and remember things. In many places in the world, there has been a loss of indigenous or rural languages and traditions, leading to a loss in knowledge of certain species. But at the same time, as a society, we can cause a species to go extinct because of miscommunications and portrayals in our cultural works. A perfect example is when the the 2011 movie Rio came out. It featured a species of bird known as a sphinx macaw. And at the time, it was completely extinct in the wild, with a few in captivity. But because of conservation efforts, they're coming back from the brink of extinction. So because of the movie portraying the bird in Rio de Janeiro, many children from the actual territories the bird used to live in thought it must live in Rio de Janeiro as well showing that media can change our perception of a species and actually edit the youth's perspective and their thinking and teaching them to lose their traditions. And if the media portrays a species in the wrong light, it can even have the adverse effect and cause a lack of funding and support for conservation for biodiversity. While there are many animals that as we urbanize move into more and more remote places and we don't see them as often, they will fade from our memory and we will either think they're extinct or forget them entirely, also affecting how we handle biodiversity. For example, if an owl eats a raccoon, a raccoon eats a mouse, which eats a grasshopper, which in turn eats grass. Imagine we forget the raccoon exists. Not that we would forget that those adorable trash pandas exist, but if we did, then messed with the owl or the mouse's habit or diet to help preserve biodiversity and help them go extinct, then the raccoon would have to go somewhere else and would either go extinct or insert itself into another food chain, messing up biodiversity in the ecosystem. As humans, we have such a big impact and responsibility for nature. To an extent, I never knew. I mean, until recently, I forgot that wolverines existed. They are insane animals. Nevertheless, societal extinction is the perfect example of why we need to stay informed and educated and help everyone learn as much as they can. Honestly, it helps us preserve who we are as humans. Well, that is all I got for today. Thank you so much for listening, and do not forget to share this to anyone or all those in your life who could use a scientific moment in theirs. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow for another episode of Quandries and Sundries. Stay safe, stay sane, and stay healthy. This is Van Masterson, signing off, till we meet again.